Unfortunately, in the NBA, if you're a young star playing for an organization that's clearly not in contention to make the playoffs, a lot of the casual viewers don't watch those teams and their results to the major media outlets, just barely giving coverages to a team that to them isn't worth talking about on air. And sadly, due to this, it leads to various young stars going well under the radar. And one of those young stars I do believe is still underrated today is Shea Gilgis Alexander. Despite the improvements I've seen him make year after year, I still feel like he has been going under the radar and I feel the need to talk about him in this video. So before we get into it, make sure you guys like the video, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell because it certainly benefits me and the channel. But with that all being said, let's get right into it. Let's start off with one of the best aspects of Shea's game and that's his finishing ability. For some reason, the best part of his game is still underrated because most people don't realize that Shea is one of the best finishers in the NBA. Shea is ranked number one in drives this year, 23.9 per game, and he still does it at a very good efficiency, 49.1%. Even though he's playing with very bad spacing, when you watch Shea drive to the basket, you notice that he uses a lot of deceleration moves to fool his defenders into trying to rip the ball from him, only for him to blow by the defender for points at the rim. Because of his footwork, his speed, his change of pace, and very good ball handling ability, it's really hard for a defender to stay in front of Shea because he's just one of the most unpredictable players to guard in the NBA. Which is why it's hard for teams to switch their big man onto Shea because he's going to dance around with them on the perimeter and attack their slow footed feet to generate good offense all the time. Like here, he slowly puts the ball between his legs and then he immediately accelerates to the basket for a scoop layup at the top of the rim for an and one. Here he gets a screen, does a slow hezzy here to throw off the defender only to cross back in full speed for a layup. His change of pace you can argue is probably the best in the league. He's not incredibly fast or too slow, he just plays at a pace that's hard to predict. And it goes into why he's one of the most unpredictable players to guard. And when you combine that with his length, you get a guy who's incredibly shifty and has the length to lay the ball over any small defender. And because of how quick he is, bigs find it difficult to guard them as well. And when you put into context that he's having to create all of his offense practically himself, Shea's ranked third in the NBA on unattested field goals made. Pretty much 83.2% of Shea's points came from self-creation. And that just further goes into why Shea's actually one of the best isolation scores in the NBA. According to NBA.com, Shea's frequency in going to isolation is 27.7% of his offense. And the reason why I bring this up is because Shea is in the 80.3 percentile. And for how frequent he does it, it's actually really good. When he's doing all these herky jerky moves on the perimeter and then eventually attacks the basket, forcing the defenders to either collapse on him or give up the layup or even sometimes he shoots the three with the step back that he has in his back or this pull up shot that he's been doing for the past two years. Even though his pull up shot is very slow, it's still very, very effective. And when you look at last year's shooting percentage compared to this year, it would seem he has regressed as a shooter, but that deserves a bit of context. Last year, Shea only played 35 games and he was shooting 40% from three and about 41% on pull-up shots, which in comparison to this year, he shot 30% from three and 35% on pull-up shots in 56 games played this year. And two things go into this. And the first one I already mentioned is the games played. It's common knowledge to know that if you have a much larger sample size for games played, it's probably a good indicator to know which stats are more accurate. And second was that he's having to create almost all of his offense on his own. As previously stated in this video, Shea's a very good isolation score. But if Shea's not going to get any consistent secondary scoring from another guy, and he's forced to play with one of the worst spacing lineups, arguably just one of the worst lineups in the league, period, I can understand why his shooting might suffer because this year he's having to create more of his offense more than any other year in his career so far. 
But despite that, I still believe Shea's three point percentage and pull up percentage last year, in my opinion, was a bit of a fluke. But I do think another offseason for Shea to work on his shooting again. I do think his shooting stat should go up and not be as low as it was this season. But scoring isn't the only good thing about Shea. Shea's really good, and I mean, he's a really good playmaker and he's really good at passing as well. Sometimes I do believe that Shea's passing gets overhyped, but it is undeniable to say that he's actually still a very good playmaker. Shea averaged 5.9 assists, and he's very good at leveraging his scoring gravity to creating good scoring opportunities for his teammates. And it's actually pretty impressive to see that despite the addition of Josh Giddy this season, he was still able to maintain that level of playmaking, even though he would have to share the ball handling responsibilities with another player that's a very good passer. And Shea's decision after getting a screen is top tier. Once he gets his screen, he decides whether to shoot his pull-up shot or wait for an opening in the defense to throw a pass to the big. Shea is averaging 0.96 points per 100 possessions, and that's what I like about the OKC Thunder and why I like their future so far. Shea doesn't have to be an all-world playmaker for their team to function. We saw Josh Giddy many times during the season be able to playmake at a relatively high level for their team to function, at least for the time being. And if Shea could just stay at this level of playmaking and increase his scoring productivity, I believe his offense has another level it can reach. And one flaw in Shea's game that I do believe he needs to address this offseason to become even a better player is his defense. This year, I believe he made significant improvements on the defensive end. He averaged 1.3 steals per game this season. And we saw that he was an excellent off-ball defender. He was reading passing lanes. He was snatching the ball out of the air. And that was leading to points in transition. Shea has been a much smarter as a defender than he's ever been, using his size, his length to stay in front of the opposing offensive player. Despite his defensive improvements, I still wouldn't call him a good defender. I'd classify him as an average defender in the NBA right now, but make no mistake about it, Shea possesses nearly all of the necessary tools to be an elite one. He has the length, he has the size, he's very smart when playing off the ball. He just needs to improve his on-ball defense, and once he does, he definitely, definitely will be getting brought up in the best two-way players conversations. And the funniest thing about everything I've said in this video about how great Shea is can be easily seen by just watching a couple of OKC games, but sadly, some casual viewers just don't watch the OKC Thunder, which leads to them just not seeing how good Shea is actually is. And it leads to him being underrated when you're brought when he's brought up in basketball conversations. And that's why I believe if the Thunder could draft either Paulo or Jabari Smith or this offseason bring some extra shooting to this team that desperately, desperately needs floor spacers for Shea, then I do believe he can be alleviated some of the scoring load and he doesn't have to do all the creating for the team. But that's all my thoughts. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys agree with me. Despite how good Shea is and how much better he's gotten, he is still, and I mean still, widely underrated in the NBA community. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section below. But before you guys leave, make sure you guys hit the like button, hit the notification bell because it keeps you guys posted on other content I will be dropping on my channel. And without further ado, Thank you guys for watching and have a blessed day.